Hello YouTubers. Just thought I'd go over the uh, dehydrated goods here. Here we have the dehydrated coleslaw. And this is just bagged coleslaw. I didn't want it to go bad. And it's a little brown because I think I overdid it. And I had the temperature on a little too high because it was so fine. But it could also be like cauliflower where it regains its color. But even the little carrots in there dehydrated very nicely. Be perfect for a soup. Maybe even a dip. Okay, and then we got carrots. This is, in fact, five pounds of carrots. If you look carefully, you'll see a slight ridge around this one. The circle, there's that sweet center to the carrot, and around that there's some fibrous, um, I don't know, ten tendons or something like that, I guess you can call them. I don't know the correct word for them. But anyways, you'll see that they're slightly raised, and these are the ones that are not blanched. These ones are blanched, and in the circles, mm, they're not raised. It's kind of hard. I'm going to focus on that, I don't think. But, so I'm guessing, well, I'm pretty confident that in blanching these ones, it also retained a brighter orange color, darker orange color, and uh, when they de when they rehydrate, so when they dehydrated from blanching, the blanching broke down the fibers in it, allowing that to dehydrate a little better and not be so fibrous. Pardon me. Now, I did a second batch, half the bag of carrots, and I did not blanch them. Now, the reason for this is, I'm assuming now I'm new to dehydrating. If I'm wrong, correct me, please. That the Blanched ones will be, um, how do I say, soggy or mushier, tenderer, tenderer, than the unblanched ones because they're going to have the fibers still intact, not broken down. So these ones will go in the stew, and these ones I'm hoping that they will turn out well like a side dish. Now the reason for that is my kids will not eat them if they're mushy. They would prefer frozen food over non-frozen food or over canned veggies. They will not eat canned veggies. I don't know. They're just too mushy. And then we have the banana chips. Banana chips. I, I'm going to toss them. The kids ate too many one day and had the runs. Um, and that wasn't, like, that was five each. And not good. Not good. So, even though people will tell you, go ahead, eat them, and I thought they would be okay too. Not a good idea. So they go in the trash. This is about, uh, say, five or six medium-sized yellow onions. Seriously. Now, when they tell you it's an outdoor job, it's an outdoor job. I did not blanch these. <coughs> Pardon me. And I put them inside the house, right by the window, open the window and everything, and in 20 minutes, our whole house was literally in tears with so much of the oil going drying out in the air from the, oh, I'm sorry, so much of the oil from the onions going into the air burnt our eyes to, we had to lay down with cold cloths, and I felt like such an idiot. Um, I figured, you know, it's okay, it's okay, but then it all of a sudden, boom, hit us all, and yeah, definitely an outside job. I heard that blanching does make it easier, but again, I don't want them to be um, I want them to be more fibrous because these are going to go into a stew. And I'm thinking onion dips as well. Here is the apples. Sticks. Apple sticks. Awesome. The kids will eat them like crazy. Hubby's already taken them to work. Doesn't want to give them up. And then we have the potatoes. You saw me do the potatoes? They were quite thick. But my mandolin doesn't go any thinner. Go figure. And with my arm the way it is, I can't do um, 40 pounds of potatoes slicing all that long. So uh, these are going to be used for your typical scallops, scallop potato. And um, yeah, I figure how to rehydrate them properly before I actually uh, I have to look it up, make sure I don't make a mess of them. Mom's already ordered 40 pound bag of potatoes done this way. Jeez, Mom, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, and then we have corn. This corn was left over from dinner. It was a lot of corn. I didn't want it to go to waste. So, I dehydrated it. 
Now, mind you, it was fully cooked, so I'm expecting this to be not that great rehydrated as a side dish. So this is going to go either ground up into something or other, or it's going to go into a stew where uh, texture is not a big deal because uh, it'll plump up and hopefully not have too much of a mealy, grind, um, animal feet kind of taste to it, I guess is the best way to explain it. <coughs> Pardon me again. Here we have the tomatoes. Tomatoes, these were um, four large tomatoes, and I had to slice them up before they went too bad. Um, these will get used pretty quickly here. Again, I was going to going to grind them up in my grinder, but my little coffee grinder died on me. So I don't have a mortar pedestal. My um, food processor, I don't think the blades will reach the bottom, so these might just sit on the bottom and it won't quite get what I want, the dust that I want, the uh, tomato powder. So, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with these just yet. i got to figure out or get a new blender. Maybe if I could just um, grind some up with my hand and, you know, the old, put them in a, I don't know, they're too, too soft, I think, for... Because I, I dehydrated them a little longer than usual just because I knew I was going to make them into dust and I didn't want them pliable. Most people will get your sun-dried tomatoes, so this one's a little pliable, that are really um, sweet and, and but still bendy. But I tried to get them as, as uh, crispy as possible just because I knew I was going to use them in as a powder. Oh, you can see some happening there. But that's going to work really nicely. And then we have the peppers. Oh my god, these are so good. Now, hubby can't eat peppers. Um, they just do not do well on his system. So, I was going to keep the red peppers and the green peppers separate. But some fell through the little... Uh, I guess slats in the dehydrator trays and mixed all up so I just kept it mixed up. I swear if you could smell these they smell like the stone wheat thins with red and green pepper in them. They just it smells awesome. And then here's the seeds left over and the uh, bits and pieces. And yes this is the white parts that are in the peppers. I didn't want them to go to waste like why not use them right? Waste not want not. And then I'm going to take, oh, I just had an idea. Oh, 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 oh. Right now, I've got cream cheese and sour cream defrosting in the freezer, in the fridge. Yes, you can put them in the freezer. Your cream cheese, not so much for dips anymore. <coughs> Man, pardon me. But you, when you heat it up, it does loosen up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this, take some of this, take some of this. Mix it in with the uh, cream cheese sour cream, and voila, we've got a nice little dip happening. Oh, it's like Epicurious seasoning is going to be happening here. I'm going to have so much fun. I've got to get a new grinder, though. That's number one. So what? I think one of the things every dehydrator should have, every person who dehydrates that should have, is a good working mandolin our meat slicer, of course a dehydrator, and a grinder. These three things, I mean, you guess you could do it all with a knife and a cutting board, but it'll make your life so much easier. So my thing is, I'm going to get a new mandolin, and I'm going to get a new grinder. Well, I hope you enjoy Adventures of Dehydrating. And this is all in about uh, a week and a half to two weeks worth of dehydrating. I just can't stop. Because in here, right next door, in here we got potato cubes going. Hey, hey. Now they were blanched a bit, and uh, I'll go more into that later. Enjoy.